Good. Okay. Can you hear us now? Hi, Carla. Hi, Christina. Can you hear us? Ask them if they can hear us now. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Oh, they're saying yes, they can hear us now. Is that your British accent? There we go. Okay. All right. Hi, Kelly. Everyone seems to be able to hear us now. So. It's live, folks. Yeah, Anything you know, can happen. You know. And usually does. I wrote a prescription here earlier. See that one? <laughs> <laughs> he got a D minus in penmanship. <laughs> or he could have been a doctor. But steady went for rocket science. No, can no, that's a whole different language anyway. So, well, you know. So we are Quilters HQ Windmill Sewing Center and Sewing Machines Express, and we do this every Tuesday night, starting at six, sometimes maybe six o five. Um, the websites are QuiltersHQ.com, WindmillSewingCenter.com, and QHQ the number two dot com. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it when you like and share. We've got some demos for you tonight. We've got a preview of an upcoming project that we're going to be doing here at the store. Um, I have a coupon code for you, too. Ooh, nice. It's uh, QHQACC, and you can use that on our website for AccuQuilt project, products. So I can't tell you what the discount is because they have a map policy, but you can use the code. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Chris. What else do we have going on? Um, we finished an event. You know, flying into the holidays, just trying to keep up, I think. Yes, just like. trying to keep up. We've got some bundles coming up for machines, long arms, lots of stuff. Yeah. So lots of fun stuff. So stay tuned. Open house, that's coming up at yeah. Windmill Sewing Center. Yeah, Customer One. Appreciation Day. Customer Appreciation Day. Well, week it'll we be a little it. bit different this year because of you know our favorite word covid yep so it's going to be a week long instead of a day long yeah so it'll more giveaways more prizes and more food, food and, yep and social wine, distancing the limitations the slushy machine is going to be here yeah. actually it's coming tomorrow nice hi georgia hi so tom We'll have time to perfect that formula. Yeah. Holiday cheer. Holiday cheer. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. So we got some great demos tonight. We do. Giveaway Susan, as always. Giveaway as always. Susan has a demo on the 15-minute table runner. 10. Okay, 10, 10 15, 10 whatever it takes. <laughs> Two days. <laughs> Threading the machine doesn't count in the 10 minutes. Okay, broken threads and bobbin winding don't count in the 10 minutes. Okay, so uh, Vicki has a demo. She's going to show you how to do a uh, napkin with a rolled hem, which is super easy holiday gifts. And then if we have time, I have a short demo for you as well. So should we get started with the project? Sure. Come on around. All right. Kathy said she loves prizes. I love Don't prizes we all? Too. <laughs> We're going Hi, to Carrie. be starting an embroidery club starting in January, date to be determined. And we're going to be doing the Farm Fresh, which is by Lunchbox Quilts. It is going to be a 10 month block of the month, but it's not a block of the month. It will be blocks plural. Um, as you see, there are a, a lot of blocks in here. And what we're going to start out with is our little eggs down here and our little chicks. 
And you will learn not only embroidery techniques, but applique. A lot of this is an applique uh, effect. So we're going to offer it two different ways. If you want to come to class, um, you can sign up to come and be a part of the class itself and bring your own embroidery machine, and we'll sit and embroider and learn all the tips that are important for this project. If you, however, are out of town or cannot make it to the store or are concerned with our favorite pandemic, then we also are going to kit this project for you uh, so that you can do it in the privacy of your home. And we will also provide the, um, the fabrics that you need. Most of these are done with the uh, paintbrush, uh, plain fabrics, with a lot of um, techniques added to them. And you can see, if you do this project, you really need to have at least um, a 13 by 8 inch embroidery hoop is the largest one. And most of these blocks are cut to size, so you'll need more fabric than is there. But it was a fun project to put together. Um, it looks daunting, but it really isn't because they go really fast once you get the technique down. And I will be teaching it. I'm very excited about that. Yay. And uh, and so um, you'll start out with the little eggs, which is their fun. You'll also learn about mirror imaging because a lot of these projects are mirror image, which they don't tell you in the directions. So I will help you learn which ones we need to mirror image uh, for the quilt to be complete. And if you want to start signing up, we're taking sign-ups. So you can sign up on the program here or call our store. We'd love to have you join us or we'll send you a kit either way. Anything you want to add, John? We don't, we don't have the cost yet. Um, so we will have that and we will have a thread kit for you and a stabilizer kit as well. Yes. So it'll be fun. We have Kilroy here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did they call that little guy that looked over the fence and all his, it was just his nose and his hat. Kilroy. That was Kilroy. Kilroy. Yeah. Kilroy. Oh, I didn't hear him say Kilroy. <laughs> I thought it was Mr. Wilson. No. Oh. That was Kilroy. wrong era. Yeah, Dennis okay. the Menace. No. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong era. There was another show. With, oh, uh, Mr. Wilson. Uh, um, Tim the Tool Man. Yes. I was, was looking over the fence. So. Wilson. You know, Mr. Yeah, Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Was there you go. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Who wants to go next? I thought she was going to move ahead with her. Oh, okay. Well, you want to do, do the want demo? demo? Okay. Do the demo. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Is everybody ready for a demo? Let's do it. Okay. Yay. Are you going to follow me? Demo, right. demo, Let's demo. Go to the Bernita, the new Bernita uh, surgery that I was playing with. Let me bring a chair, too. That I was playing with today. And it does the most fantastic rolled hem ever. We have other uh, surgeons, too, that also do fantastic rolled hems. But I was playing with this one today since I had learned this one. Um, so basically what I have done is I have threaded this, and I have used the rolled hem uh, setting here with the one needle. And so you can make your napkins. If you're doing lunch size, they should be 12 by 12. Dinner size is about 18 by 18. If you're really elite, you want 21 by 21. But this one is basically an 18 by 18. So to do this, and I already have it set up with the rolled hem. All right, you've already finished one side. Now, for those of you who are not speed demons on your machine, there is a setting on the Bernina machine for half speed. So now I will demonstrate what half speed would look like. So we'll go to the other side and get the surged edge off, or the uh, selvage. It's pretty quiet. Yeah, it's very quiet. I know. <laughs> this is not my speed of sewing, 
But for those of you it's who, mine. Yeah. <laughs> those of you who are just starting out or who are unsure of your serger, this is a wonderful feature because normally a serger is regulated strictly by your pedal. And this way, this sets up a speed that if you're worried about it or if you're making turns of corners or anything more complicated, this is an absolutely amazing feature on a serger that I have not seen before on any other. So that's side two, but we are not going to do this at the speed oh, yeah. anymore. Put the super speed back super on. Super speed back on. <laughs> I like the super speed. Yeah, me too. It's not that loud. Oh, that's a now, what I have done before on dinner parties that I have put my table settings out and just didn't look quite right without napkins. I've just gone down to my stash and found extra fabric and made napkins before dinner. I have done this before. And you can see how fast it is. So you could make a 7-4 and a 6 in no time at all. Now if you're doing the Queen's dinner or something, you might want to start sooner. Right. use any fabric, cotton, linen, uh, lace, anything. But see how nice and square that is? It's a perfect hem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a perfect hem. And then what I normally do with these is I just pull them out, take a, a tapestry thread, and I just put them back in. Either that or I just burn them so that they are at the edge. Um, but well, but you have to be worth, careful yeah. about not burning the rest of the project. But um, yeah, this is how it turns out. So this is your Christmas um, napkin all done. Those would make a great host to skip for holiday parties. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Great idea. Everyone loves your jacket. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I got that at a quilt uh, expo. Hi, Jane. Okay. So yeah, I'm so it is a serger. It looks more like a sewing machine. Um, that's that's what uh, Bernina came out with, and it's got a little more throat room there. Yeah. So Wonderful. It looks more like a sewing machine. And it's easy to to operate. Easy is good. Easy What's up next? Um. Susan. Susan has a show and tell as well. Hi, everybody. Do you remember last week I showed you Warp Speed Ghost? <laughs> Well, I finished the other two. I just didn't get them stuffed because I got excited about a different project. But they are done and just need to be stuffed. This one has measles. <laughs> <laughs> this one just is very subtle and subdued and modest it with like, uh, like Swiss tummy dots. Huh? It's like he has a tummy ache. Oh, that's true. His eyes are green. <laughs> yeah. His eyes. Yeah. Green. What did he eat? I don't know. Well, Halloween. Could have been what anything. about the, the what about the the measles guy? Oh, the fabric he picked. I see. Yeah, he's funny. And they were fun to do. And I did them for me. How long did it take? Uh, not 20 long. Minutes? Maybe long from start to finish, twenty minutes. So and it's that a pretty was quick on project. the 780, 830. 830, the 830 Elna embroidery machine. Hi, we Donna. Here at the store. But why I didn't get these fellows stuffed is because I saw a couple pieces of cellophane buried under fabric on my cutting table, and I thought, okay, what are those? And I found these two little kits with a pattern or instructions not a pattern because you don't need a pattern and the fabric 
and it is called 10 minute table runner. Whenever I see a pattern that says you can do it in X amount of time, I never believe them because it never works for me. But this one did, and I made two of them today. So you said that there was no way to make a table runner in the 10 minute time frame. Is that right? No, I said you can. Oh, now you can. Yes. You had to eat your thread. Okay. <laughs> Okay, this is the first one. <laughs> there's the back. It came out really nice. Two pieces of fabric. That's all it took. There's no batting. There's no quilting. You can embellish however you want. So, uh, depending on the fabric, I've got in my machine one of the mug rugs had a coffee cup. I could embroider the outline of a coffee coffee cup, boo, oh, boy, in the center of it to embellish it. This is the other one. It had Christmas fabric. They both turned out really nice. Yeah, they did. You said something about a button? Mm-hmm. Button, button, who's got the button? Who's got the button? On the game, isn't it? Huh? Yes, I think so. You pass it hand to hand or whatever. It's been a long time. It suggests on the pattern that you can put a button at the base of the triangles on the ends so that those stay down. Otherwise, they're floppy. What I did tonight is I just used a little bit of Elmer's glue stick to hold them down. Otherwise, they is that kind too of flop thick open. To embroider your coffee cup on the end, you could do that. End. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good I idea. mean, I think what I'm going to do to embellish these is just use a decorative stitch um, and go around. Hi, right, welcome, Christy, Stacy, Mary. So, yell and scream and wave and stomp your feet if you'd like me to show you how to do this now, and I will. Yay! We want to see. <laughs> Does everybody want to see how you do it? <laughs> Okay, you're going to start out with two pieces of fabric. One is called a theme fabric. The other one is a coordinating fabric. The theme fabric is 10 to 12 inches wide by width of fabric. So that's what the fish are going to be. That's going to be the center part of the table runner. So the fish would be here. The coordinating fabric is also fish. So it will show and you cut it eighteen inches wide, I believe it says. Oh, between ten and twelve inches wide of your coordinating fabric. So I think you could probably, yeah, that'll go all the way down. So when it's done, you're going to have this piece in the center. You're going to have this as your borders. So we're going to go to the sewing machine. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew these fabrics together in a tube. So I'm going to sew them down one side and then the other and then turn it out. And that's three-fourths of the project done right there. So... Are you going to make some seafood napkins to go with it? <laughs> well, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. They would go really well. <clears throat> so I'm using the Elna 920 mainly because this is the machine I have at home. And I'm using the A foot, which is just Hi, Marilyn. everyday sewing foot. But I've also added the magnet seam guide, so I'm sewing a steady measured seam. And in this case, this table runner uses half inch seams. Uh, and to get that positioned for the half inch, I used what we have here is they call it a sewing machine seam guide. It has little tiny holes and it has measurement uh, references. So 
you find where your half inch or your quarter inch is so that you know how far to move your either your needle over or where to position your magnet. Uh, Can we sell are, those? Yes, we do. Oh, okay. The little seam guides are two ninety five. Hmm. So make it mine. Magic seam guide. <laughs> We also have the magnet, and it's by Juki. Glasses on, and it's twelve ninety nine. And I can't be without mine. Very, very handy. Very, very strong. It has a little um, bar that you have to use to get it off because it's so strong. And I'm pushing up and it doesn't want to move. So it doesn't move while you're sewing. So we're going to sew this up on both sides. So we had a viewer question um, about the how long are the runner pieces? With the fabric. So 42, 45, whatever the bolt is that you've chosen. Okay. So they've made it very simple. Hi Beth. Your right sides together of your two pieces. I'm going to sew down each side so then I have a tube. Did Marilyn make one of these? She hasn't yet. She had to she, work, she worked today. Until now. She is a table runner master. There you go. <laughs> Hi, Julie. Welcome. So viewers have said that they make a lot of the table runners. A lot of fun. Pretty quick. Yeah, it is. And so if you have last minute gifts you have to have like Vicky's uh, napkins mm -hmm. this you can do napkins to match this you have a little Christmas packet there really yeah. so is there any is there any kind of rule about how often you should change your table runner out you know after the cats laid on it for a couple of days <laughs> <laughs> Or you've had company and they spill wine on it or spatter grease, yeah. So there's no real hard, fast rule of thumb? No. Depends on the level of cleanliness you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> and what table you're using it on. Definitely it would last more longer company, on a diamond. Definitely that. <laughs> so the rule of thumb seems to be change it before company shows up. <laughs> okay. All right. So we had another question, can fleece be used in the table runner, hmm. or is it too thick? No, it can be used. It can be used. You okay. can use anything. Just uh, keep your lint roller handy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I've got one side stitched down, and I'm just going to connect <laughs> the other side the same way. Um. Yeah, I was thinking as I was doing this, uh, thinking, doing two things at once, um, about putting a really lightweight, thin piece of batting in here just to give it a little more body. And that way, if you set a hot item on it, it mm. would kind of protect the area. I just like the fact that I could do it so quickly and get two of them done. We'll get those with the fabric measurements for Elena. Uh, Patsy says you should change them out when the run when get hot and sweaty. The runners. That's a good call. That's a really good call. <laughs> what did you say, Meryl? I said that's like when the table gets wet. Oh, the table gets wet. Okay, so there's another good one. 
So the theme fabric is 10 to 12 inches and the coordinating fabric is eight, 18 inches. So if you went and purchased a um, third of a yard and a half of half a yard of fabric, that would make this. Okay. You could probably make a little bit on it. I would love to see the fleece one from the person who's going to do that. Yeah. Make placemats to match. Why, yes, you, you could. could. Could you Could you sew two of them together and get twice the length? Why? I don't know. If you got a yeah, longer you table. Could. You're, maybe make a bowling alley. Well, sure. <laughs> sure. Okay, I have these two pieces sewn together. It calls for pressing the seams towards the coordinating fabric. So I'm going to do that now if you want to talk about something else no we're well, gonna watch you iron oh <laughs> i'm gonna do this on the laura star, star iron by steam yeah, huh? okay. there you go i was right, just gonna we'll say do it. hi judy be sure and give it that big burst of steam because it's been on all day Now this Laura Star is very nice. I like the length, I like the width, and the fact there's nothing piled up on it. My ironing board at home has stuff on this end, has stuff on that end. <laughs> Not necessarily related to ironing, so, you know. Don't burn yourself, Susie. Well, and I'm doing it with my um, non prominent hand. One of the features about this Laura Star is it has been proven that steaming your masks, your cloth mask, will kill the COVID germs. Hmm? Added benefit while you're ironing. I'm sorry, what? Are your hands getting too hot? My hands? From the steam. Are you burning your hands? No. Nice. Well, that's a benefit. It's a dry steam and it doesn't burn. Nice. I kind of crinkled that one up when I was ironing the other side. I have to tell you, if anybody remembers, uh, what was it? One of the 70s shows, Emily Latella, she sat in the great big huge rocking chair on the porch so she looked like this little child. That's how I feel. This board is up so high, I feel like... <laughs> 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 okay, now we're going to go over to the cutting table and all we need to do is to even up the ends before we move on to the magic of the border and finish. Somebody had a question. We have a question? There was a question about um, in place of interfacing, made the runner with fusible and felt that the triangle ends were too thick. Mm -hmm. I thought two layers of fabric would be too thin. That's why I thought fleece instead. Please Ooh. comment. Well, I think fleece is going to be thicker than the. Um, Fusible interfacing. Uh -huh. 
So what's your thought on the fleece? I think that it'll be too thick. I would have to agree. But I understand what you're trying to do. So I think what you may be able to do, and it will definitely increase it from 15 minutes, is measure from your point to here and then just have a, a batting or something in here that, to stops. here that stops. Because if you do it all the way, then it'll be too thick. I have another idea. In one of my quilt magazines, you know, they always start telling you about the new trends that are coming our way in uh, creativity. And they were talking about using corduroy for quilts. You could try using corduroy for this table runner. I think that would be really cool. A lot of texture and depth. What I was just doing so I can um, trim this off, I am getting the seams from both sides like you would nest because when we open this up, our seam fabric is going to be in the center and our coordinating fabric is then going to be the side trim. So I'm just kind of getting that set to go. So they said it was Lily Tomlin. Thank you. Yeah. What was the show? Was it Saturday um, Night Live? Okay. I was thinking it was the one that Goldie Hawn was on and they would pop out of boxes or whatever at the beginning of the show. So we had a viewer that said they just spray starched theirs to give it a little more body. Well, good thoughts. <laughs> Marilyn says cat hair will do the same thing. <laughs> what, give it thickness? And more body body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it moves around an awful lot. It gets wiggly. Oh, they said it was laughing, actually, yes, was the show. Yes, that's what I was trying. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like the little guy that she was through. one of my yeah. favorites with that character. Yep. The viewers know. They know They a got lot. you covered. I love all of our viewers and I love the ones that are local that come in and share their stories or what they liked about our past shows. It's just a lot of fun. Okay. So now I've got those ends evened up. And if anybody's timing me out there, I know we're probably going to go over the 10 minutes. I was you just... didn't have to talk about it when you were doing it at home. You just That's did true. It. <laughs> you didn't have to narrate it? Yep. One said, was that Edith Ann? I think it was. Yeah, Edith Ann. I like her operator ones. Too. Oh, yeah, that was good, too. <laughs> so now what I'm doing is I'm getting the coordinating fabric so that it is the same distance here and here. So it makes it look like you've added a border. And you have. Just differently. We can make a whole quilt that way. Okay. <laughs> That'd be a heck of a tube. Next week's demo is on <laughs> <laughs> It's the tube quilt. We might go over. There you go. <laughs> be a dog quilt. <laughs> well, that'll make a cute doll baby quilt, too. Doll baby cute. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. I don't have anybody that does doll babies anymore. I just do a dog quilt or a cat quilt. <laughs> All my little babies are grown up. I'm Such as see. life passing by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. goes by quick. This year's went by faster than. Faster. Can't believe it's almost Thanksgiving. 
Okay, so I've just kind of eyeballed it to see that this is straight. Now I'm going to fold it. You really want me to do that? You're a stinker. Marilyn's a stinker. They all what are sisters for? Is, but I love her. Okay, that's an inch and a half. Karen was asking about the um, charm, the mini charms project. That'll be up. Next. That's next. Oh, that's the next demo, Karen. Okay, so I'm going to take this. Hi, Barb. Hi, Miranda. And fold it in half. I get real fussy about getting things straight. Marilyn says I just love to pet the fabric. That's right. <laughs> and I do. Pet it. Pet it. I'm going to take it back to the machine and I'm going to sew the edges off here a half an inch. They need to make a cutting board that has the machine built in. I think they there do. may be some. They do. Do they? Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. So we had a viewer that said Edith Ann was their granddaughter's name. Really? Yeah. Was well, she as funny as Lily Tomlin? I'll bet she is. This has turned into a trivia show. Yeah. <laughs> I can sew fast also. Not as fast, but I can sew fast. Did you have that rabbit turned up as far as it would go? No. <laughs> three quarters turned up. Your sister's egging you on, isn't she? She is. As usual. That's my girl. Okay, I'm, I don't think I would be real good at doing it with the Laura Star, but I would press this open as much as you can, but basically you're turning it so the seam is on. I'll come back over to the table oh. so you can see it better. Remember to like and share. You know, everything we're seeing tonight would make great holiday gifts. That's yeah, that's what a lot it. of the viewers were commenting on. They would make great gifts. I don't see our handy dandy little. And especially with the napkins to go with it. You yes, got like a whole place setting it. there. There you go. Thank oh, you. it's the whatchamacallit tool. Doohickey. Doohickey. Yeah, do okay. Multifunctional. <laughs> And it is. And if you like it, say, make it mine, do hickey. <laughs> <laughs> That'll really have K or Carrie asking questions tomorrow. <laughs> There's your table it's runner. Yay. Nice. Very nice. Good nice job. Done. Good job. Cute fishies. So now we're going to need some fishy placemats to go with it and some mm -hmm. napkins. napkins. <laughs> and it's yep. a seafood party. Right. Are you guys bringing the lobster? <laughs> Ooh, I like crab. Wow. <laughs> yeah, as soon as we get back from Alaska. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if that you won't work, want, you end up just per their there. instructions, if you just go out and Google 10 minute table runner, yeah. <laughs> there are several different um, videos out there. Donna commented just, that that was her favorite tool, so you're using her favorite tool, the doohickey tool. This one? She named it, yeah. The, the doohickey. Yeah, that, I love she didn't the like the multi finger pressure. That's just but, too many. Words. I mean, that's like yeah. a whole multi function yeah. finger pressure. <laughs> and okay. the marketing department had a tough time naming that one or something. I don't know. That ends my demo. Who's next? That would be me. Yeah. All right. It was Margarita Day when they named that tool. Right. <laughs>
<laughs> Which so, day is Margarita Day? It's every it's day. Whatever day you want it to be. <laughs> Ooh, it's sorry. Day. Nope, you're fine. So I talked about these little charm squares. I know you have tons of them in your stash because they're irresistible. <laughs> And they're three dollars ninety nine cents. You pick up three or four of them, but this is you get two of them out of one. One pack makes two of them, and then you have an extra two blocks left over. And I just throw those in a little bin that I keep all of my stuff and um, set those aside. This one is Glad Tidings, and so. When you're going through these, you're going to separate these out by color. So I'm not going to actually sew them because it would take too long and we don't have enough time for all of that. So you separate them out by color. And there's usually three or four colors in them and then just match them up. I didn't really care if I matched, so clearly I did, match them up. And then you, um, you'll you add binding to this later. I just surged these off. But... For you people that have the domestic machine and you're like, okay, well, how do I quilt these? I wanted to show you a really quick, really easy, I'll give you a close-up of it. So this is, I call it my drunken crosshatch. <laughs> <laughs> so the goal is here is not to be straight with it. And it really does add kind of some yes, interesting like texture. texture to the um to the quilt and i'm using a polyester thread so that it stands out a little bit because these can be kind of busy i did another one with a candy ribbon Good. can you use the same tablecloth stitch that um vicky did on the serger and serge it close with that and it would really finish it off without having to bind it then. you absolutely could and i feel like i need to do that now <laughs> 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 so the other one that I made up is the zoology and these are kind of pastels but they're really pretty and I've already quilted one I don't have it trimmed um, a fat quarter does both of these with leftovers so you can make these out of your own stash hmm. if you don't have these we have plenty of these this one is Regency romance it's kind of real traditional colors roses and almost has a French look to it. Regency Romance, comment Make It Mine. This is one of my favorites. This is the Best of Morris, and it has all of these blues. So you could make one with blue and green and then make another one of peach and white, and they would all match. This one is Glad Tidings by Joe Morton, and that's, that's this one. So Christmas fabrics for this one, or holiday fabrics, not necessarily Christmas, but country colors. So let's go over here, and I'm going to sit down at the Bernina and show you how easy that stitch is to do. And so this is the other one that I did. Yeah, that one came out. That one's pretty cool. And there's the back of it. That's an extra thread. It happens. Ooh, straggler. So you're going to start in the corner. And these don't have to be. I'm going to set this so that I don't have to use the pedal because I don't really want to. But um, So you're going to start near a corner. And just so this can be done with a walking foot. The goal is just to make wavy lines. Oops. So on your domestic, you would recommend using a walking foot or something? Unless you have a ruler foot or, or um, a darning foot. The darning is the one that hops up and down when you sew. A darning foot will work for this as well. Or your ruler foot. So just come across, and I'm kind of come down a little bit, and then go back come over and these are irregular and when we get going here and 
See how my lines are just kind of crooked? And then I'm going to jump to this. the other way. Got some questions when you're okay, done. Okay. I hooked in my thread there. Give me a second, and I will be done here in a second. That was a machine telling me to slow down. done. So you can have these pretty quick little gifts. And it took me about maybe 15 minutes to sew these together. So look, they match ish. Yeah. So you got some questions. Okay. Can you scroll back up there? We'll start with some of the questions. So that's the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, how much are those? The, the the little squares. The little charm squares. Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine charm squares. Um, let's see. Did you put batting or insel bright in there? This is just regular batting. Okay. So it's just for a coffee cup. If you wanted to use it for a trivet, okay, then you would need to use the insel bright. So Kitty said that a serpentine stitch would work on some of the domestic machines also to do that. Yep, a serpentine okay. stitch. That one's a little bit too regular. The goal is to have it be very random. And I've actually used this. It's, I've used it on that quilt up there, I think, too, in, in quilts that I've quilted. It makes a really kind of fun pattern. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. So um, super easy to do. Anybody can do it on, and you don't have to have hours and hours of practice to get that motion down. And it doesn't even matter. So, like, I've got some jerky movements in here. So, like, there's one there. Doesn't matter. It still looks like you intended to do it. <laughs> does the machine have a regulator? It does. This one does have a regulator. Um, I was sewing without the pedal. If I... I'm going to turn it on. Hopefully I won't knot it up here. Hey, Linda. I'm going to pull my thread out here so I don't make stitches. So... So the lasers here are actually what control 
the stitch regulator. So it also has a manual mode. It has three modes that you can set to memorize. So um, I have this one set at 12 stitches per minute and or tw per minute per inch per inch. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be yeah, sewing yeah. for a while. I would be taking a nap if it was 12 <laughs> stitches per minute. Um, and the max speed where if you're doing the regulated, that it's doing 250. Because I don't want it to sew really fast while I'm not stitch regulated. Um, you can do just regular stitch regulated. It's 12 stitches, and it will only sew when you move the fabric. And then it has another preset that we haven't set up. We haven't set up a memorized stitch. And then manual, which is what, how many stitches per minute. And so this one is set for a thousand right now, which is half speed for this machine, or maybe We've a little a less. We've got a YouTube video on this machine now. Yeah. If you want to learn we more do. about it, if we want to learn more about this one, um, I think we're going to have a holiday bundle with this, and maybe Laura Star. Mm -hmm. So um, nice would be something to come talk to us about. Um, Susan asked, are the feed dogs down when you're doing the drunken quilting? So. Yes, you want to lower your feed dogs. Um, if you're not familiar with what foot I was talking about, let me see if I can find one and show you what it looks like. This would be your darning foot. And so you can lower your feed dogs and use this to make that. Um, is there a letter on that? If that's a Bernina. This no, is an Elna, yeah. so it doesn't. On an Elna, it's a PDH. PDH. So, but most machines have a foot that looks like this. Might be metal, might be clear plastic. Some of them have open foot, and that would work as well. So they wanted to know what the blue pads you're using are. These are, um, what do they call these? Frog. Oh, near there. The grip and stitch. Yeah. Grip and stitch. These are amazing. I like them a lot. I was um, talking to a lady about these earlier today. Um, she was looking at this machine as well. Um, they make the round hoops. I like those, but they kind of limit your vision. These, you don't have to wear the gloves. They really do grip your fabric very well. I mean, I'm hardly even pushing on it at all. Um, they work really well. These are $29.99. I think we have them in stock. Comment, yeah, make, it, right comment yeah. make it mine. Yeah. Grip and stitch. So pair these up with your um, your like so steady table or the table for your machine. You can knock these out so fast. Get your serger out because I'm going to do that next. <laughs> we don't have time to do it on the show, but I'm going to try it. Michelle <laughs> said she needs this machine under a Christmas tree. Michelle, me, we can make that happen. <laughs> Send your sweetie on in and we'll get it for you. So uh, do you put the squares together side by side? Um, so when I piece these, I take, I sew the whole thing in twos in like just two together, just chain piece them and then take two of those, piece those together so that you have multiple rows of four. And then I lay those out and sew five together to make this. This is a four by five. I kind of like it four by four too. So if you didn't want to have it quite as big, because to me this kind of looks like a little bitty placemat. Yeah, they were saying between mug rug, placemat. Yeah. But so, um, you know, if you have somebody that's not really, you know who I'm talking about, they set their spoon down and they leave the little puddle on your table. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this might be a better size for them, <laughs> but they're easy gifts. You can put your donut on here too, or, you know, your little breakfast snack and have that as well. So, I mean, um, lots of things you could do. Mm. No, nah, throw them in the washing machine. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your spot remover handy. And What's the giveaway tonight, John? Oh, 
It's up there. Oh. <clears throat> it's a keychain. We're giving away diamonds. Nice. <laughs> Actually, I think it's a ruby. Is it a ruby? It say on the back? Actually, it's a ruby. Sometimes it's so ruby nice. Over. It's a keychain from the Ruby Star Society from Moda. Oh, nice. Okay. So, of course, you know, I'm a nerd. I looked at it and saw Superman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does look like that. A little bit. So how's the how's the scavenger hunt going while we're looking for a winner there? Oh, it's good. We've had, Hopefully. I heard a, I heard a woohoo, I found it. <laughs> yeah. So what, what are they? What are we doing for viewers that are... So, um, so we're doing four of them. So one of them is online only. Um, three of them, you come into the store. So the online one, we're actually giving away Go Big. And in store, we're giving away $500 holiday shopping sprees. How much fun is that? I mean, that could go towards that yeah, gift nice. under the tree. Yeah. Was it Michelle? Uh, Michelle, yeah. 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 So um so it's a scavenger's hunt. You can go to each of the websites, coultershq.com, qhq2.com and windmillsewingcenter.com. There is a um page or a tab or if you're on your phone it's a pull down menu that for the giveaways. And go ahead and register, find the item and then come in and find it in store. Don't ask the staff. They don't know where it is because they don't know what it is. <laughs> um, when then, is Customer Appreciation Week at Windmill? Um, it's the week of December 4th. Yeah, November 30th through the 5th, I believe. I believe that's right. Yep, so it'll run all week long. So um, we are going to be sending out um, invites so we're doing it a little bit differently this year because of the COVID restrictions. So we're going to be sending out invites. You need to RSVP. Even if you don't plan on attending, please respond to the RSVP because everybody who replies gets entered in for a grand prize giveaway, which I heard was going to be a sewing machine. So. Sure, why not? <laughs> so look for that in your email box and... Um, you know, it'll be fun. We'll have food. We'll have the wine slushy machine up and running. Lots of time to perfect Thanks, that. Thanks, Kathy. Appreciate so, it. So, lots of fun stuff. To, Pretty good show. And Pretty if Myron's show. in town, we can probably get him to come over and yeah, you could pester say him. hello. Yeah, <laughs> he's just playing golf. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, looks like tonight's winner was Brenda Hutchison. Brenda. Brenda Hutchison? Brenda Hall. Hutcherson Hall. Brenda Hutcherson Hall. Congratulations. So right. I think that's us for tonight. We hope we gave you some some easy gift ideas for the holidays. Yep, they're right upon us. They are. It's right around the corner. So easy stuff to make and fun and so how do we send off the show, ladies? Hope everyone has a great evening. Yes. Be yes. safe. Be safe. And as always, make, make it so. Good night, Good night. everyone. Good night.